Well, hello, and welcome back to another Petra Football video. And you might ask yourself, what is the title about? I don't think there's a pandemic at Brighton. Well, you might not think there's a pandemic at Brighton, but I believe there's going to be, and this is just the start of it, with De Zerbi not doing too well in his first couple of games. Oh, get right into the issue. I think Chelsea, my club, we, we have admittedly raided the uh, Brighton camp numerous of times. The first issue, I believe, is Graham Potter, obviously. I'll probably say this is the biggest issue. He's left, and they've had to bring in this new man, De Zerbi, and he's, he's not done as well, you know. I think that Potter was key and influential to Brighton's success, and uh, I, I just never really thought they could replace him, and... It seems like they can't, I mean, they haven't scored in four games now, or possibly even five, and I, I think, you know, that's just, that's, that's bordering, like, relegation there, and I think definitely next season, they could get relegated. I know, Brighton fans, you're probably typing in the comments right now, what does he mean? There's no way we're getting relegated. I just think, you know, maybe you could get relegated, unless something drastically changes because Potter was your key man he works the magic no, no pun intended he knew how to win games how to get the best out of these players and uh, another another like real key member of um key factor was his staff around them he also took them to Chelsea uh, and I think you know without this coaching staff they've tried to they've tried to keep the same tactics play the same style it's not working out and I think you know it's also it's also really 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 sad to see with uh, Trossard starting the season so well six goals in 12 games I mean that is pretty well for such a low low um, low side in the league I mean they, they have had their highs with last season but you know Graham Potter's left the coaching staff's left. Their their main man for many years now, Bruno, has left. And it's going to leave the question to me, will Trossard leave? And I think, you know, may, many of the main people from Brighton have left. I think if Potter didn't go, all his coaching staff didn't go, Trossard probably won't leave. I think I could see him doing a January exit from Brighton and Hove Albion. Probably not to a top club. Maybe to uh, I to be fair, I could see him going to Man United, but I think you know, not not a mid table, just like a Newcastle perhaps. I think he could definitely get into that Newcastle squad and actually be one of their key players. Another issue I think Brighton have currently in their pandemic, as we call it, um, is the way um is the sad story of Enoch. And Wepu, and unfortunately, it's such a sad, sad uh, like story because he's had to retire early due to heart conditions, and he was such a promising young player. I mean, he he definitely could have got a move to a top club like Bazuma did. I just think you know that is it was really affected Brighton, and I think they haven't been the same without um, Wepu. I think even with Potter leaving, and Wepu could have really helped them and solidify uh, the defence and the midfield and get some attacks going. But he's unfortunately had to retire. It's lovely to see, though, he has got a role somewhat still in football. So he's still doing his passion. And it's honestly such a nice thing to see. But unfortunate, his career had to end. Another issue is... I, per I personally do think... It wasn't much of an issue until Potter left, but once Potter's gone, letting key players go, I think if they still had Bazuma, still had Cucurella, they would have done really well. And I just don't think I can see it getting better because I think, as I've said before, Trossard will probably leave because the fact is that if he's he's not seeing much, uh, much, a, a, um much faith in the in the side now 
You know, they were doing so well under Potter. That's probably why he wanted to stay, not get a move away. He started so well. I think, I mean, Chelsea could even go in for him. It's just that there's definitely clubs higher than Brighton and doing better than Brighton that can actually offer him a deal, get him regular football. And I think, you know, he would like a lucrative offer from one of the big clubs. But another issue is the man they've brought in to replace Potter. He's not started well. He's never started well. So that does that does give me a bit of hope if I was a Brighton fan. Because that, that leaves... Well, he's not started well, but he can recover it. He, he knows what he's doing. Deserby is the man for Brighton. But I just don't think he is. I, I'm going to be honest. I was giving him a shot. Um, when George was saying, ah, oh, he's, he's had eight games, uh, he's never won in his first eight games before. I was like, give the man a chance. Well, we've given him a chance to perform in the Premier League. And he's not really done too much to uh, to show his talent. And uh, I think a key example would be the Brighton-Brentford game. You know, they, they had so, so much opportunity, chance to win the game. Before the game started. But I think the mentality they went in. That game was poor. And it was actually a big reason. To why they lost the game. I think Tony. Yes he was on great form. But I think you know. Lewis Dunk and Adam Webster. Before Potter left. Personally thought they could get into the England squad. But now. The new system. Well they've tried to play the same system. But now they've changed it. And I just think. It's, it's a bit of a shambles and I feel sorry for Brighton fans because I personally do do feel like my club has just basically merged with your club. We, we've stolen all of your key fundamentals to become a, a good club and it's not going to get better because Chelsea, we're scum. I am sorry, but we are. We, we have taken Potter, we've taken the coaching stuff and guess who we're getting next? Brighton's head of recruitment. I mean, we've seen how good their recruitment is. They've got a stupid man in after kukarada has gone. He's not He's not played enough. They've got Ndav in after Morpe failed to score. Uh, failed to score, failed to perform. Did nothing really for Brighton. Hasn't played. And they're, no doubt with this head of recruitment, they would fix the Unwepu issue. Get another good young talent in to replace him. They've got Billy Gilmore, but we have now just stolen him. And I just honestly would like to apologise to any Brighton fans, especially Tommy B, because we, uh, it's basically a merge club at this point. Well, what's next? Half, half. This kit will half be Brighton over Albion next season. Uh, it's, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Um, also, I do, I do have to say, Deserby is questionable, as I was saying. Estupinan, he's not played much. Young talent, Tarek Lamptey, one of the better players in Brighton squad right now. Not playing. Undav gets five, ten minutes. You've got to give him a chance to prove himself. He could be one of the best strikers in the league, but we don't know because you give him five, ten minutes at the end of a game when the game's basically already lost. You know... Another game that does sum it up is the nil-nil Nottingham Forest versus Brighton game. They were dominant. They, they they should have scored. They were all over them. But something just wasn't going right for them. Getting the ball in the back of the net. And do you know why? I just think, you know, they've lost the mojo. They've lost the emotional intelligence that Graham Potter gave them through his master's degree. And I think, you know, another thing really affecting them is that leadership kind of role and I think Lewis Dunk has been qu quite quiet on the pitch recently I haven't heard him as vocal as he used to be since Potter's left and I think you know this has really affected him another another player I think needs to perhaps not be played so much is gonna be uh, I know it's gonna be a bit controversial Solly March I think, you know, he doesn't do too much for Brighton. And with Tarek Lamptey, he gets overlapping runs. He crosses the ball into the box. 
great passer of the ball, but he's not given the opportunity because they've got Solly March. Whilst Solly March is reliable, he is consistent, he never performs top quality like Tarrant Clampty. So that wraps up the video about Brighton's current pandemic and hopefully it does not get worse for Brighton. And if you're a Brighton fan, let me know if you think this is good of video and let me know any issues that I missed with your club. Remember, oh, sorry, before I go, remember to like and subscribe for more content like this.